Hello everybody and welcome to the first video I actually make where I explain a solution to a code forces problem in actual in two years. So it's been quite a long time but I am back and ready to give you more high quality explanations as I started to come back in the competitive programming world first by expanding my coaching activities. If you want to get coached by me, check the link on my website in the description and you can contact me there. And also I organize a lot of stuff what when it comes to contests, uh, even holding speeches, as you can see in the previous video I made, and many, many other interesting activities. And here I'm back as I started taking Code Forces rounds too. So, for today I'm going to present a problem that was given yesterday at the Code Forces Div 2 round. So, it was C fill in the matrix. This problem was also A from the Div 1 version of the round. So, it was the easiest Div 1 problem. But it was an interesting problem which combined both some implementation with finding a pattern that uh, had to be printed and we also had to print the max of the uh, columns that we had to construct with our algorithm. So we had quite a few things to do and we also had to be careful at some corner cases. So basically the problem is asking us to fill a matrix that has the dim dimensions N and M and for each uh, row we need to place a permutation of the numbers from 1 to m from 0 to m minus 1 and at the same time we wanted the max of the columns so the maximum the minimum exclusive to be as big as possible so the smallest non negative integer that doesn't show up in the array we are given the definition of the max in the statement and uh, it's also something that shows up frequently when it comes to code forces problems, especially at this level. Now, we want, when it comes to max, so basically if we have a max equal to uh, y, it means that we have all of the values from 0 to y minus 1. We want to not have y. And we can have everything else, y minus y plus 1, y plus 2, and so on. So it's very important to avoid having uh, this value when it comes to the max. And what does this observation lead to is that for each row, we would ideally, ideally want to skip on a 0 once, to skip on a 1 once, and so on, as long as we can skip through multiple values. But we also want to be careful that if we have enough rows to not fill the columns with every single value because in that case the max would be stuck to zero or to some very small value anyway. So we want to avoid this issue. And the way we can go by this, just like it usually works with the constructive problems, is to try and think at some cases. And given that we want to skip zero here, one here, two here and so on, it makes sense to think on, at an approach where we can just uh, fix the column where we skip the values and we can think about a cyclic like structure. So for example, if we want to skip here zero, we can think at something like this. So one, two, three, four, and so on. We can go with zero and again, it's a permutation. Here we can also do something like this with 2, 3, 4 and so on. And here we can put something like 0, 1. And we can keep going like that actually. So we can do something like uh, this and at some point we would have like 0, 1, 2. And well, we can keep going like this for a long time. But we need to be careful at making sure to not get to a point where we fill it out with something like again 0, 1, 2 and so on because in this case the entire work we've done to skip these values would be for nothing. So we need to make sure that when we fill out the solution we won't be going through a permutation like that. And in order to do that the only condi condition we really need to be careful about is the relation between and and m as basically when we have more rows than uh, columns uh, we want to make sure to fill the last few rows with the same thing we can fill it with something like uh, one second we can fill it with something like 
uh, m minus 1, 0, 1, 2, and so on. And that would basically imply that we avoid 0 here, 1 here, 2 here, and so on. And this leads us to having the greatest max possible, the greatest possible value of the max. Now, in order to implement something like this, you just need to start with an array where you fill out the values. So here I have a permutation of size m, and at first I fill it with every value between zero and m minus one. Now for the first row, if we only have one row, we can just fill it out with the permutation and any permutation works for n equals one. Otherwise, as I was telling you, we need to be careful here at choosing between the minimum of m minus one and n. It's very important to go up to this bound as if we go only up to minimum of n and m, we end up having a smaller max when we have fewer rows. So this is a case where many people had, uh, took, did mistakes during the contest and it's very important to take it in account. And in order to simulate this pattern where we go cyclically to the left, I just uh, fix the starting position and for every value, I just uh, decremented the starting position while making sure to also avoid starting a negative positions. And again, for the last few rows, as I said, we can just copy what we previously had. So this allows us to not have to worry about filling it out with other values so that we lose all the progress we've done with the max. Now in the last part of the solution, what I basically did was to compute the max of each column. Since we didn't really have to bother about how fast we could do it as the bounds were small enough, I just used a set and I inserted everything in a set and while I kept finding the values, I just incremented the max. And then I inserted in an overall max and then I did the same thing once with the max at the end. All I had to do in the end was to print the grid and also to print the answer. It's very important that the bounds are in such a way that n and m, the product is up to 200,000. So you had to construct the grid using a vector from STL, something which is very important to know. If you enjoyed watching this video, please like, share and subscribe the video. It helps me a lot, especially as I'm trying to restart doing YouTube videos and I want to bring you as many high quality video editorials as possible. Once again, if you enjoy my content, like it and see you next time. Good luck.